Good evening, everyone. Sorry. Um, bright tonight, but um, hopefully, I guess you can hear my voice. Um, I believe we had a wonderful weekend. Good evening. And um, uh, please, if you are ready for the class today, just send the message. And yes. I can hear your voice. Do not. And that's why we look forward to a good night. Just send the eye or yes, yes sir. Or welcome. So everyone is welcome. We hope to have a great day today. Um, we have been working on um, writing, I mean, on listening and reading. We spent two days on listening last week. Um, you're welcome, sir. And we spent. Um, Three days on reading last week as well. And um, I just want to know for those who did the assignments, what was I experienced like? Are we, are we improving? Uh, are we getting um, better? Or uh, are we struggling? Are we still struggling? Uh, are, are we working within the time frame? Uh, do, like somebody sent a message to me um, about uh, so a particular question, a summary question, and the person was complaining between that. Uh, uh, the method that I shared probably was not so fast and all that. Please, if you have experiences with your practice, please kindly just send a message. Let me let me see your thoughts. Let me let me know your experiences so far about uh, uh, you know about um, your your um, your practices. Were you able to like have a, I mean have it easy, or it was quite tough. It was quite. Um, Difficult. Let, let me just have you can send the message to the chat room so I can just view it. Um, so why uh, with that? I mean, why, why, why we, I mean, uh, why I, I expect that? I like to continue with writing text, writing text one, tax one, writing tax one, writing task, tax one. Now, um, for academic IT, it's divided into two, two, two parts. We have um, tax one. Okay, someone talk about timing. Okay, we'll come back to that. But let, let me just start off with the class today and then we'll come back to do some review on reading and continue. So, in underwriting, we have tax one and tax two. Okay, tax one, tax two. Tax one is, according to some people, the, the lesser form of, tax, of writing. It does not involve, um, um, a lot of things, I mean, specifically about the time and about um, the number of words being written is less. Tax two is involving uh, more time, more words, and all that. So tonight we're going to be focusing on tax one and we'll be doing that for the next um, four days. We're going to be focusing on tax one today. Is it four days? Yes, we will focus on that for the next four days. I want to be sure whether it was four days I actually connected, uh, I, I said, or probably it was less. I think it's three days. So we will focus on that one today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we're going to be um, focusing on, okay, no, it's, it's, tax one will be for the whole of this week. Okay, so I think that does it. Five days. Then tax will be seven days, then speaking will be two days. Okay, so that's the way it's going to run. So tax tax one will be for this whole week. So I want you to just, you know, relax your mind. We're going to be taking it slow and steady. Today, I'll be talking about the parameters. What do you need to have a seven in tax one writing? That's number one thing I'll be talking about today. Um, and I'll also be talking about um, what are the proficiency skills that you can put into tax one that can get you better? How can you improve your skills in tax one? How can you get better with tax one? Number one is what do you, what, what are things you need to do to put in place to have a seven in tax one? And number two, how can you improve your proficiency skills on tax one? Number three, I'll be talking about tonight is what is the value in 
or, or a value of tax one in writing text, in writing module. What is the value of tax one in writing module? All right. So let, let me start with the first, which is what do you need to do to have a seven in tax one? There are some parameters. I, I've said this for listening. I've said this for um, reading. Now I'm on parameters for writing. Now, uh, uh, if you have the, the 80 list book that I talked about, can you read it? Uh, let me see, because we are about to use the 80 list book now. It is time for the 80 list book to be used. Let me, let me see the wave. Okay, just keep waving. I've seen one. Let me see. Most people are not on video, so I can't even see others. All right. Okay, I, I only see one wave. Okay, no problem. Uh, that I believe, okay, okay, I've seen two, three. Okay. Um, okay, four. But um, so, some books are not 80 leaves. Okay, fine. Now, this is why you need the 80 leaves book because um, you will need to ensure that your book is the standard for the exam. Now, here is an 80 leaves book. Can you see? An 80 leaves book. And um, this sheet, this sheet, this old sheet is the sheet you need, is the sheet that is the format sheet for the exam. Now, some people believe that you might need to probably go print the format. Now, this is the kind of sheet that is used for the exam, something like this, right? Now, if you look at the breadth, it's almost similar, though not exactly the same. So, if you're using a Jota, uh, a 60 list book, 40 list book, diary, it is not appropriate because you will need to uh, um, understand how the parameter works here to be able to actually um, prepare for the exam. If you have been using a book like this, something like of this size, this size, very small book like this size, I would advise that you just change it to a 60 list, a, a 80 list book, that's big booklet, so that you can begin to um, prepare yourself in the tune of the exam. So let me start with the parameters. Writing tax one has four broad parameters. One, task achievement. Two, lexical, if, if, if you have listened to my audio before, the one I sent when we were about to start, you will not need to write again because I've already said this before, but just because of those people who, are, who probably have not listened and we have to repeat this all over again. All right, all right, so I just want to do this fast. So if you're not getting it, don't worry. You will get it um, on the audio that I sent earlier. One, task achievement. Two, um, coherence and coercion. Three, lexical resource. Four, grammatical courage and accuracy. Now, these four broad parameters must be you must be well developed. You must have a high level of skill on these four parameters to be able to have a band seven in writing task one. And I will be taking them one after the other. Now for the task achievements, there are about six sub parameters. One, word count. Two, Task um, trend explanation. Three, trend, I mean, um, um, accurate trend identification or um, accurate identify, I mean, identifying trend accurately. Four, overview. Five, um, ap approach to question. Five, approach to question. And six, I can't remember that six, but I know those five, are, I mean, I want to mention them all over again. Task, uh, I mean, uh, word counts. You must write more than 150 words to have a seven in task one. That is statutory. And I want to, I want to give a shocker. If you are not able to write more than 150 words, the examiner, Oh, thank you very much, my sister. The examiner will not check your work. That is the most ridiculous thing that can happen in the IELTS exam. Just imagine that um, you have written a very beautiful essay, and then the only reason why the examiner did not check your work was because you didn't write up to 150 words. That could be ridiculous. 
I mean, you had all the links in the world, all the lexical resources in the whole world, and then the examiner didn't even read your, your work. That should be, and they only give a six. That well, at least you came for the exam. Um, so I want to encourage that you do, and that's the reason why I was talking about the the ATD's booklet, so that from now you can know the number of words that you are writing. How do you calculate that? You will count the number of words in a line by, or you multiply the number of words in a line by the number of lines that you write. So if, for example, you are writing uh, eight words in a line, and then you, write, you wrote 10 lines, that would be 80 words, okay? So automatically, you are writing 80 words, I mean, uh, 80 words with 10 lines. If you write 10 words in a line, and then you have 10 lines, that's 100 words, okay? Or if you're having um, 15 words in a line, which is, that means you're writing very tiny, and you have um, 12 lines, that's an average of about um, 180 words. So all, uh, overall, it will be very easy for you to know the number of words you're writing if you are using the appropriate material the appropriate writing booklets, which I, uh, which I personally believe should be, um, what now? The 80 leaves booklets. Please do not use other booklets, use the 80 leaves. I'm sorry, I had it. Hello, can you hear me, please? All right, I'm sorry, the call came in, so I'll ask quickly. Now, I was talking about um, 80 leaves booklets. Know the number of words you write per line, and know the, know the number of um, lines you write by essay and then get used to it. So then the other thing is trend explanation. Now I need everyone to be very attentive now. The moment you get this, you will not have to struggle in the, in, I mean, when we come to it in the, in, in, in the future. Every tax one essay is expected to be judged or adjourned by the marking scheme on three grounds. Every tax one essay by the marking scheme is adjourned by three grounds. One, trend and overview. Organized trend, identified trends. Organized trends and identified trends. That is, if, for example, I write a tax one essay, and my marker cannot identify, cannot, uh, cannot adjourn that I correctly identified the trend or I organized my identified trend. I'm going to have a low mark. Number two, my academic vocabulary. Academic vocabulary. And number three, my overview. My overview. So, Whenever a tax one essay is being marked, there are three things that are looked at. One, my trends, is it organized and am I identified properly? Two, my overview, am I, uh, am I able to write it in the right way? And three, um, my what now? What is the thing I said, please? If you had me, write it down. Academic vocabulary. Academic vocabulary. Thank you. So, now, which means that my trend is a very key aspect of my essay. What if I don't know what the trend is? Now, I will have to shock everyone here tonight. For the whole four times I wrote ILTS, I never had anything like trend for exception. All I did was just describe the essay, like, like the way you would describe a diagram. That's um, 
uh, saw also in, started in 1990, moved in 1992, later increased in 1993, then continued to go and move in 1994, then came down 1995 and finished in 1996. That's how you should write essay. I never knew anything about trend or exception, and it really messed me. And so when I got this information, honestly speaking, it became my life saver. And I believe strongly that it is a life saver for you. What is a trend? And what is an exception? All right. A trend is, is, defined, is defined based on the kind of data. So don't just write a trend is this or that. It is based on the kind of data. That means in a tax one essay, there are two kinds of data. Two. So write this down. In a tax one essay, there are two kinds of data. Sometimes it's mixed. Just like in tax two essay, you have opinion essay and idea essay. In tax one essay, you have two kinds of data. Of course, we are told that there are five classes of data. The table, the graph, the uh, bar chart, smart chart. Those ones are classifications. They're just categories, all right? But there are two primary kinds of data in tax one essay, all right? One, move um, static data. One, static data. Two, movement data. So we are, we are going to be explaining a trend based on the kind of data. Are we following me, please? If you are following me, just say, say, send something. But I, I don't want to show up by somebody say, sir, oh, what you are saying, I don't even hear anything. Everything I I don't know what you are saying this morning. Just send a I or something, all right. Okay, so thank you. Now, I said there are two kinds of data in a tax one essay, a static data, and a movement data. So I want to, I want to describe a trend uh, based on the kinds of data right now. From a static data point of view, a trend is the highest group in that data. Now, when, when you talk about group, groups are the, um, the, the stuff that are being explained on the data. The groups are the lines on the charts. They are the bars on the charts. When you say bar charts, okay, the group is the bar in the charts. When you say line charts, the group is the line in the charts. Did you get me now? When you say pie charts, the group are the, the percentages, the, those classifications inside the bar chart, in, inside the pie chart, those are the groups. The groups are the columns in the table. So, the, and usually they have names. If, if you watch it very well, they have names. Please, somebody should help me answer, Mr. Tolu or Mrs. Tolu, please just tell, let, let, help me answer. So they, they have names. Some groups could be countries. Some groups could be schools. Some groups could be commodities. Some groups could be, could be, uh, could be um, classifications. And as a matter of fact, we even have subgroups. Are you following me right now? We have subgroups. We have by uh, a group, we have groups under them. There are some essays like that, all right? Now, when you deal with a static data, please, if you understand what I'm saying, just be saying yes, yes, so that I will not have to go far before CISA come again. If you are getting what I'm saying, just let me know. All right, thank you. So some groups, thank you very much now, thank you. Okay, now some groups, uh, I mean, as I was saying, I don't want to mix what I was saying together. Try to understand, all right. Um, if you have any, any essay around you, maybe uh, any question from anywhere, just pick, pick an essay, any essay, and look at the essay. If you see a bar chart, the bars on that chart, what the names they are called, all right? They are the groups, the bars. Okay, maybe you have a group and ask like five bars. One bar is Lagos. Another bar is um, if, uh, Ife. Another bar is Ogun State. Another bar is whatever. So the names of those bars, they are called groups. It, 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 it could be a line chart, all right? You see one line, trumpet. Another line, guitar. Another line, um, what now? Um, what? Give me, give me a name. Just say something. All right. So those lines and all that, they are called groups. 
I hope I, I just hope that I'm making sense. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense to somebody. Yes, you are. You yes. are. You are making yes. sense. Okay, okay, okay. So back to what I was saying. When you have groups like that, um, the groups for a static data, they are usually not having reference to time. Did you get my point now? Groups in a static data do not have reference or respect to time. That means that you will only find a year being involved. In a static data for a group, you will always find just one year being involved. Are we together, please? Whereas in a, in a, in a movement data, there are two, three, four years or more time being involved. So basically, the, the difference right now is that in a movement data, in a static data, you are dealing with only one year or no year at all. Maybe you just have a bad chart like this now. And they said uh, the, 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 the chart below um, reveals the number of commodities in Lagos states. And then they mentioned rice, beans, and whatever. And they, and they stopped there. They didn't, they didn't say from a year to another year. They only said in Lagos state. Or they said in year 1990. They didn't make reference to another year, just one year. OK? So in that situation, there's no reference to another year. There's no comprising with another year. It's just one year. All right? And most of the time, when they do not make reference to year, they may make reference to place. They may compare places together. They may say, for this particular country, um, this is the number of commodities that we sold. In this another country, this is a particular commodity. So in Nigeria, we sold rice, beans, gari. Rice, 50%. Gari, 30%. Beans, 20%. In Ghana, we sold rice, beans, gari. Rice, 10%. Beans, 50%. Gary, 40%. Um, then in Benin Republic, we sold rice, beans, gary. Rice, 90%. Gary, 5%. Beans, 5%. So they are making reference to place instead of time. So it's not a matter of in so and so year or from a year to another. It's just about that particular year and nothing more but a hair. Now, if they now say from January to June, that means there's a reference of time because they are comparing January to June. But if, even if they say from Monday to Friday, it's still a comprising of time. If they say from five o'clock to 10 o'clock, it's still a comprising of time. But once time is not compared with each other, and the only major um, focus is place or there's no time involvement at all or there's just a year mentioned or a day mentioned or a month mentioned and nothing more that means you are dealing with what static data and in that kind of data the trend is the highest the group with the highest commodity in that kind of data the trend is the group with the highest commodity in that kind of data, the trend is the group with the highest commodity. And the exception now is the group with the lowest commodity. The exception is the group with the lowest commodity. Please write this down in capital letter because uh, you will need it later. Some of the time we don't know uh, how, how so important this um, stuff I'm sharing is until probably you get to um, a very conflicting graph and you will need to decide the trend. Now, how many people, they wrongly define the trend. They don't find out, they don't even know what the trend is and they are confused. So I'm trying to like help us now so that we don't have to go to, into this error. The trend for the static data is the group with, let's have complete that one. The group with what? The, the what? The group with the highest commodity. Highest commodity. Highest, 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 commodity. Value. highest value. What's the word? Value. 
if if you are if, if you are commit commons, if you say it to value, even for the highest value, why the exception is the group to the lowest lowest value? Lowest value. Um, um, movement data. Okay, movement data. It's not, it's not exactly the same. We are dealing with um, uh, movement. The trend now in movement data, we are talking about from a particular uh, month, from a particular month to another month, from a particular year to another year, or a particular um, um, time to another time. So there is a reference of time. Sometimes it may be two separate years, maybe. Um, so and so in 1990 and so and so in 1995. Or they say so and so from 1995 to 1999. So it could be a flow to the year or a comparison of years with each other. Whichever the case that might be, what we all know is that when we deal with, with um, movement data, years. Years or time are being involved. So we have to with a flow of years, a dynamic movement from a year to another, from a day to another, from a month to another, or from one time to the other. And when you now, when you now want to talk about trends for this kind of data, what you'll be dealing with right now is, is what? The patterns. So, so what, what will now be your trend? Your trend will now be the pattern with the highest number of groups, the pattern with the highest number of groups, while your exception will be the pattern with the lowest number of groups. Your, your exception will be the patterns with the lowest number of groups. Now, in an event, Uh, in the event where you now have a, a group with a, 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 a data with four groups, and you have two pattern, I mean, uh, you have two patterns in that group, and each pattern has equal number of groups. Maybe, for example, you have a pattern like this, all right, and then two uh, uh, two groups go up. Two groups come down. That means you have um, two uh, 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 two patterns with equal number of groups. Two two. What do you do? Which one will now be your trend? Which one will be your exception? That's the most common confusion. Just focus on the group with the highest value. That will become your trend. So what am I saying? Why um, static data? deals with the, the highest value. Um, movement data deals with the pattern with the highest group. The pattern with the highest group. So if you have five, five, five um, groups in a particular data, and three of those group increased, two of those group decreased, I want somebody to tell me which group, which of the groups will be your trend. If you understand what I just said now. The three groups. The three groups that have the highest. Good. All right. So, and that is the simple way you can identify trend. That's how you identify trend in movement data. So, when you properly identify trend, you have a mark for that. And, and, and that gives you a guarantee of seven. And you could imagine how this denied me from seven for four times of writing. Truth be told, it's really, really not easy. It was, really not, it was a painful stuff. I'm fast. <laughs> Excuse me. Please, am I fast? <laughs> I've spent 30 minutes already. <laughs> it's a one hour class. Okay. Probably will not be able to finish everything um, on, um, on parameters tonight, but I will see how, how much we can go. But please, if I'm fast, kindly let me know so I can actually like, you know, go back and repeat myself. I, I just I, I just talked about trend identification right now. Now, what is trend explanation? 
trend explanation is the is, is is a simple summary that is always located in your body one paragraph about your trends is a summary that is usually located in your body in the first sentence of a body one paragraph about your trends now when that summary is missing or when there is no um sentence that points to that summary in your body one paragraph it reduces your, your band score usually when you start a body one paragraph they are expected to let us know um what your trends look like just a summary just a view a, a, a general rundown of how your trend look like now when that is missing you have a lower score that is what your trend is, is, um, trend, trend is talking about now when you are now talking about identified trends if you are not able to relate your trend to us in a accurate order of its arrangements that is you know, sometimes when people start ST, they start with the lowest trend. That is poor. That's already a, seven, a, a, six, a 6 or a 6.5 or it's 5.5. You don't start to, to, to describe your essay from your lowest trend. You start from your highest trend. Now, when you start from your highest trend and you are coming down gradually, that is what is called identified trends. You don't start your essay from an exception. You don't say, well, I feel so much pity for this essay. And I'll start with an exception. No. That brings you a lot of reduction in your mark and that actually is the major problem with people they are sympathetic about the essay they look, for example now let me give a, a, a shocking example you have a group with five of with four um, you have a data sorry with four groups now the highest group in that data was having a a, 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 a decreasing pattern why the lowest groups Two of the lowest group in that in that data was having an increasing pattern. Then there was now one that increased and decreased. So the lowest group were having an increasing pattern. The highest group was having a reducing pattern. Then one group was now having a kind of movement going up and coming down. Now, naturally, everybody wants to look at the highest group and say, wow, this highest group that is even decreasing. And then they now make that one their first information. You have missed, and that's why your trend. Because in that group, the trend are the lowest group that has decreased, but because they have the they are the pattern with the highest number of groups. Yes, and that's your trend. It's a movement data. So they, are, they have the increasing pattern, they are the lowest group, they are your trend, and that's what you mentioned first. Then the one that is now the highest has having a decreasing pattern because your exception. But in many times, in, in many occasions, many people would rather write the uh, highest group is using pattern because it is high, and at that level, you cannot be seven. It's a pity, and so these are very simple issues that put people into major problem in writing task one. So I've talked about uh, word counts, and I said you must write about one fifty words. I should say it again. <laughs> okay, um, I said. Identifying trends should be proper. Your trend should be first. Your exceptions should be last. As a matter of fact, your trend should be your body one paragraph. Your exception should be your body two paragraph. Except you have more than one data involved. When you have more than one data involved, you may now make your trend to be as uh, to be in one paragraph. But when you have only one graph, your trend will be your uh, body one, exception should be body two. So, no matter how high your exception is, once it is an exception, it's an exception. And you know, in in in, in um, movement data, exception could have very high values. Doesn't matter. It is in static data that, that the values matter. On that movement data, your value does not matter. It is the the pattern that has the highest group that matters. Please note this. Uh, important um, um, key factor because a lot of students fall for the trap of misappropriating it, and it could be very, very dicey. So I talked about um, overview, or a trend explanation, identify trends, and then the next one is overview or your, your overview. Now, overview is 
a summary of your trend and your exception in two sentences. And it is more or less like the most important paragraph of your essay. Somebody is asking a question here, but I, I, I will answer this later. So I will not delay ourselves. I will answer this later. But, but please, if you have questions, you can put it up like you don't forget. You can put it in chat room. So I said the overview is if is a, is a paragraph that contains your highest trend, your highest your lowest exception. Yeah, don't worry. I, 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 I'm going to come again. Your overview is going to is, is, is a paragraph, is the most important paragraph in the in, in tax one essay. And it contains your highest trend, your lowest exception, and any other significant feature in that task. And it could be written in your second paragraph or your last paragraph, whichever one. You have a choice. So whichever one you decide to write it, it's your choice, but it's fine. It's okay. So it's the most important paragraph and it, it, it's expected to contain your highest trend, your lowest exception, and what again, the most important feature that you have I mean, any other feature that you can see. And I, I, I said exception are the pattern with the lowest group, groups or group in the movement data. But in a static data, they are the lowest value. They are the lowest value. In static data, they are the lowest value. So I think I, I think I've explained a bit about that right now. So now moving up um, on to um, approach to the question. There are five ways you must not answer questions in tax one essay. Five ways. Write this down, they are very key. Number one, never answer in pidgin English. Number two, never answer in informal English. Never answer in informal English. Informal English are words that you use in your day-to-day -day activities with friends and loved ones. Number three, Never use abbreviations. Don't ever abbreviate. Don't, don't say um, a D O N. I mean, um, uh, this was that use apostrophe or just using ETC and all those things. Don't abbreviate. And number four, don't use acronyms because you don't know who you are, who you are writing. Don't, don't never use acronyms. And don't, number five, don't assume the examiner will understand what you're trying to say by using short forms of words. Always write a word in full forms. So that's how to be professional. If you write in any informal way, your mark drops and you're not supposed to be emotional or show your opinion. No, in tax one, I say your opinion is prohibited. The moment you show your opinion, your mark reduces. So don't try to explain the essay. Don't tell, don't, don't, don't infer from the essay that ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, I, I, the man must, be, must have been very sad that rice was slow in the village. Yay! That one is, they call it the baloney. <laughs> if you don't know what baloney is, don't worry. But it's okay. Don't try to infer. Don't try to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, make explanations from what you have seen. Just write what you, just describe what you have seen and leave the essay for them. All right? So that is about approach to question. Then understanding the question. Well, uh, my own understanding about this aspect is that many people don't even know whether it's a movement data or a static data. So just answer the question the way they, 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 they see it, okay? And that gives them a zero from the beginning. But please understand these parameters and grow in it. Now, number two parameter is, okay, um, lexical, I don't know, is coherence and coercion. Now, I'm thinking I just deal with the first parameters today, then tomorrow we deal with questions and uh, with lexical resource and grammatical reading and accuracy so that we can have room for questions. Now, under questions and questions, there are about four or five parameters as well. All right. We have the link words or the connective devices. Link words or connective devices. Number two is accurate use of link words or connective devices. Accurate use of link words or connective devices. Then we have paragraphing. Paragraphing, then we have introduction, introduction, your introduction, and then finally, 
referencing. Referencing. I'm even, yeah, I'm, I'm even having a, a, another one. Logical progression. Logical progression. Referencing the logical progression. Now, everything I just said now, they are parameters for your, for your coherence and coercion. Linking words or link words or connecting devices, they are the words that join, they are like bridges that join paragraphs together and then they also join um, sentences together such that they are bridges like conjunctions. They are bridges and conjunctions. Now, when you have these things, they give the examiner the clue that you are, uh, you are about to say something that is different from what you have been saying before. And if you are just writing, just like, like someone that is writing, um, uh, you know, writing a, a, a long essay, you know, the way, we, the way we used to write essay, you know, in, in, in primary school, of course, maybe, the, maybe, maybe not free school now, no, just that. So when the man came, he now went, then he now came, then and just keep on writing like that. And you don't even know whether you want to say something different. You understand? That becomes a major massive problem. So um, what I would just um, want to say is, in, in trying to prevent yourself from crisis, use a link word. Now there are link words that are used for overviews. They are called, they, they, they are over, they, they are, example of those words are overall, to sum it, uh, to, to, to sum up, uh, in summary, these are the kind of link words you can use for your over, for your overview. And then there are link words to start a body one paragraph. There are link words to start a body one paragraph, um, such as first to start with, to begin with, excuse me, to start with, to begin with, um, um, uh, on the one hand, Okay, uh, initially and all that. Then you have link words for, for, for the second body, body paragraph. Like uh, on the other hand, moving on to, the, to, 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 to this particular stuff, um, you know, uh, um, in, in, in addition, furthermore and all that. Then there are link words to, uh, I mean, to, to, to buttress your points. Okay, and then there are link words to, uh, indicate that you are talking about trends, okay? Like likewise, uh, similarly, in like, in like, in, 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 in um, on the same, in, in, uh, I mean, in the same vein and all that. Then when you want to make a contrast, there are link words you can also use for contrast, like um, um, link words like uh, in, in, in contrast, conversely, on the, on the contrary, okay? However, all right. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you, Mr. Osas. Now, these are link words that you can use, and then there are also link words um, when you are trying to like express. Yeah. Thank you. When you are trying to express a a different opinion but not contrary, something like interestingly. Okay. So those are the words you can use. Then you can also have other words that was like in addition, furthermore, subsequently, followed by. Okay, or oh, this is followed by, okay. Um, although, although it's also often preferred to express a contrast, okay. Then whereas and why links um, to uh, links, yeah, you are link for a compound sentence, and it's usually appropriate in the in the overview. Of course, while and why or whereas are used usually in the overview to talk about the highest trend and the lowest trend. I will explain that later. Okay, so then now, when your, when your synonym is not used accurately, you give yourself a lower mark or a lower score. When your synonym is not used accurately, you give yourself a very lower mark or a lower score. And that actually becomes a very exponential problem. Okay? Um, so you must learn to use your synonym strengths. And that actually will come from practice and assessment of your work by a coach or someone that uh, actually um, uh, looks at your work or an examiner. Then um, par paragraphing. Um, I will advise strongly that you leave one whole space in between your work. Do not do indenting alone. You may do indenting and forget to maintain the same pattern. 
So I will strike strong diversity to leave a whole space in between your work to be able to uh, show that you are actually saying a new or mentioning a new paragraph. All right. Then, then the next one is um, referencing. That is the ability not to repeat yourself when you're talking about nouns. We have said rice grew, and then I say rice moved up. Then rice moved down. No, you can use that pronouns or this, this to make up for that. That's what that's what is referred to as referencing. And then uh, we have um, what I said dimension. Apart from okay, logical progression is actually the same thing as I said earlier. Talking about trends, it must flow from the highest to the lowest. Not the highest, then the lowest, then the middle, then the mid the half, then half. No, don't try to surprise your examiner. They have enough surprises to read. And don't, make, don't let your own be one of, one of those. There's a regular pattern you write the essay from the highest to lowest. If you go write anything else, anything else, you become a very tragic surprise for your examiner. And that you have to be in a low score. So avoid surprise. Just flow with the progression from the trend to the exception. And then, if I miss anything, um, okay, I think I think I'm fine. So I would like to stop here. So next week, I can I can take room for questions. I believe so many questions could have come up tonight. I will really look forward to having um, uh, us to respond to some of the questions and um, let us see how um, we feel with this teaching. If you understand, I want our feedbacks. If you understand the two parameters I just shared. Let me see from the chat room. And if it is so clumsy and looking like I'm speaking in, <laughs> in, in under, <laughs> under European language, <laughs> let me know how to paraphrase using word form. OK, OK, I didn't talk about introduction. Yeah. Now, introduction is actually a paraphrase of the question. All right? And um, it is like the part that, that, that brings your examiner into, the exa into your work. So if it is poorly written, you're in trouble. And the thing you do in introduction is to paraphrase your question. And there are specific words that have been lined, um, I mean, that have been, um, ad, I mean, uh, presented to us as, I mean, for, for what you can use. For example, when they say the, um, uh, the, the graph shows, the word, other words you can use for shows is reveals, okay, uh, presents, mm -hmm. uh, depicts, illustrates, uh, gives information about, uh, and all that. There are many. Yeah. Display. Yeah, display. Yeah. So, display. Describe. Uh, hey. uh, there are some words that people you often use, like explains. I don't used to like the words explain or discuss. They are too com they are too deep to express what the graph is doing. No, no. I think shows is a bit more appropriate. And also that show is a bit lower in quality of English, but it's the other one that you can use that examiner will shake. <laughs> All right, so, and then don't, don't forget to also describe to it's okay. Don't forget to also um, try to uh, uh, change the nouns to verbs. If you're not able to to get a accurate, an, a, an accurate synonym for your verb, please don't use it by offer, by fire, by force. There's no synonym for parents. Please. Or what's the name for parents? <laughs> you know. So instead of writing the name for parents, just in the form of Father and mother. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what if it was to specify that one? Or what is the name for grandmother? <laughs> All right, or so grandfather. All right, so there are some words that don't have synonyms. You just don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't struggle to biological guidance. No, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. You see that, you know, you don't have guidance as well. You don't have guidance as well. So, um, we should be careful. If you don't have synonyms to use, change the form of the sentence into a passive, passive form or change the form of the noun or the verb so that you can manipulate it and then just prepare to change your word, and then you don't have to repeat the nouns or the verbs. We are going to have a practical example, so I don't want to go into that yet, but just know that they are good. I mean, these are logical, I mean, I mean uh, these are specific stuffs around uh, coherence and coercion that are going to really help you. 
Now, tax one is the simplest of the exam. And I want to about this as the last part of it. And it is also the lower, lowest score. This is only 30% of your work. 30% of your work for tax two. Um, really? So you may do tax one for and still pass the exam. Write this down as a, as, a, as a note of warning. You may do tax one poorly and still pass pass IELTS. This is this is confirmed from a lot of people. You may do tax two pure tax one purely, not tax two. You may do tax one purely and still pass IELTS. So that means that if you don't get tax one very well, make sure you get tax two. Tax two is sixty percent. Tax one is thirty percent. So um, focus my attention on tax two, but notwithstanding, so that you can boost your tax two in case there are mistakes, it will be advised that you know tax one very well. At, and do not go beyond the number of minutes that is allocated for tax one. 20 minutes. If you are, you have the culture of writing, of, 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 of using a, a, a 40 minutes write tax one and 20 minutes for tax two. Let me just congratulate you for a good sis. <laughs> a very good sis, uh, you know. Uh, I've had to do that before, and I'm telling you the, the truth. It was not just a, a nice experience. It was not a nice experience. So, please, my advice and strong plea is never waste time on the lower mark. Um, get get better on tax one, and use, if possible, use 15 minutes or 18 or 20 minutes. Then devote your time to tax two. Eat your seven and throw the throw the space to their to their faces. Okay. So um, I, I like to have uh, questions now. Um, I believe there will be questions. Yes, I will. I will do a brief. I will be checking up out on, on questions from reading. Okay. I just hope that tonight I I, I wasn't boring. I, I wasn't boring and all that. Okay. Please don't mind it. Tax one is uh, right. Right, fine, like that. And the more reason why I. I like to take more time to explain um, some of these stuffs. They, 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 they could, you could just find out that uh, if you don't understand them now, uh, the moment you start <laughs> doing the real work, something begins to happen. All right, so let me go to the questions that are, are why here. Let me start from reading and then move down to um, writing. Now, under the reading, somebody said it's really not easy. Some questions are straightforward, why some are difficult. Well, um, the more your vocabulary level increases, the less you have concerns around um, the difficulties because you will only get to find, discover their tricks. They try to hide their, um, their, the strength of the, of the reading test in the amount of words they can hide from the examiner advice do more, load lots of reading to be able to overcome this trick and then get, get past them. And somebody talked about timing. Yes, it's normal. But please, I said something to some people earlier in the day. Why don't you ensure that you mark yourself when you have gone beyond, I mean, when you have gone, I mean, it, it reached the mark of an hour. Maybe you, got, you, you reached the mark of an hour and you have done, only done 25 questions. Mark yourself and see your score. So that you can know the number of, of score you can have in one hour. That is self-assessment. And then it will help you to grow better. So don't allow yourself to compromise your time. All right? Now, um, somebody talking about understanding, but I didn't understand that. Now, let me just move on. If you have an increasing line chart that has three groups and a decreasing line chart that has two groups, which is the trend and which is the exception. Very simple. The increasing line chart with three groups because it is the pattern with the highest number of groups. Three is higher than two. So the pattern is increasing and the group is, I mean, the, the, the number of group that has, um, the, I mean, the number of pattern that has the highest number of group is increasing. The name of the pattern with the highest number of group is increase. Why the name of the pattern that's the highest number of group is decrease. Hence, um, the three groups are the trend because they have highest number of groups with increasing pattern. Um, can you share? I think I've done this one on exception. Okay. 
if the question writes value of the group in full, am I expected to continue to write it as many times as it appears in my essay? The answer is Y E S. That is yes. How to paraphrase using word form? I think we talked about this, especially for the introduction. That is where paraphrasing really comes in for the question. The issue now is ability to identify trend and exception. Please, can you send a different diagram showing the trend on a static data or and movement data? Hey, it should be difficult to send it on this platform, but I will send it on the. I'm going to send this on the um, on the Telegram. So you're going to see. It. I will send a diagram. I will tell you this is a, this is a static. This is movement, okay? Then I'll now ask you to, the assignment for that will be very simple, don't worry. I won't ask you to write a message tonight. It'll be very simple. So I'll just ask you, but though you do listening, I didn't know. And that one will not stop. But I'm going to just identify try and session. So I will see how people get it and we can move. So what about in some way they give us process like innovation, process, all right. Process, well, we are yet to go into the details of how to explain, um, or in um, processes, but we, go, we have to get there. So I don't want us to put pressure on ourselves. I have a problem with false not given. It really confuses. Well, I've said that false simply means when what you are saying is in the passage, but it is the opposite of what's in the passage. That is all about false. Why not given is not in the passage at all. So it's about getting to justify the two. It will take a lot of practice. For we have, for we have that haven't taken IS before. This is first our uh, first time. This writing teaching is so abstract. Well, that's the reason why I said I was going to be sending. Um, you know what? It is good to see the abstract form of teaching at the at the at the initial points. All right, so that when you now see the reality, it will be easier. All right, um, uh, we are going to see this, some, some, some diagrams, some diagrams, and then we are going to get through. So I was talking about listening. Well, why, okay, let me see the listening question. Please, I think we can start asking our questions now. Um, why listening on text? I asked put bag as I listen. When I got to the mark, I saw bag. Okay, they, they should have checked. Is it only one word or two words and or a number. So if it is one word and you lose post back, then you missed it, okay? So you are growing, actually, that's growth. Uh, the best way to grow is to see that you miss chief, chief questions. Write that down. The best way to grow is to see that you miss chief questions. And the best time to miss chief questions is when you're practicing. Because if you miss chief questions during the exam, that'd be, that'd be big deal. That's just big deal, okay? So um, I, I, I want us to ask our questions right now, quickly, and see how we can um, move forward. Let's see, um, let's, let's have our questions, please. I, I, I like to have some verbal questions. And please remember that if you will be asking your questions, you need to turn on your video so that we can see you and um, uh, we can identify with you. Thank you. So I'm waiting for us. I'm waiting for us. Oh, we don't have any questions at all. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Um, so there's this particular um, feeling that I do get. Although, um, doing my listening well, classes, I, I don't know. Can I, can I see your name and probably maybe I can know where you're speaking from so I can just die by session to you? Okay, I'll follow Shari Azan. Okay, 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 you're welcome. And thank you for this privilege. And um, the problem I'm having is that practicing my listening test, I've been able to improve from 28 to 34, 35. But uh, in this reading aspect, each time I try to practice, along the way, when things get, you know, I just get fed up and I don't know. And I need something to just motivate, to just, you know, 
Is there a way I can try to improve on my especially uh, the reading part? Because when it gets to probably half of the the text exercise, I tend to get lost and I get fed up and it seems like this thing cannot be done. I don't know. Now it's a feeling. It's a feeling, it's an emotion. And um, if you keep on allowing the emotions, that means you do not want to progress with the text. Um, the, the first thing that you need to really do to do with that is to discard the emotions of boredom and um, try to let yourself know that you are doing an exam. Now, if probably you are doing an exam and the exam is really clumsy and you know that you're going to be having like probably a million error after the exam, I'll, I'll, you just say, all right, I'm fed up, I'm fed up, and you walk, you walk away. The answer is no, because you keep on saying one million, one million. So the issue now is when you are dealing with reading and you are having that saying, that feeling, you just say to yourself, "Excuse me, I can't allow this." Um, as you do that, you will naturally build a resistance against it because every single person, there's no one that has that has tried this reading practice and not fed that burden. But it is only a strategy because of the nature of the question of the passage, which is usually abstract. You don't have to understand the passage, and it's also so the, it it can easily discourage you. It can make you feel like you are wasting your time. So best bet is tell yourself, "Excuse me, I can never afford to be bored." And it even gets worse during the exam because you just finish ethic listening question, then you now move to a reading question of one hour. After which you don't go to the toilet, you move to writing. <laughs> That's like three hours on a spot. So if for ninety one hour is getting you bored, then you're in trouble. <laughs> that means you have to like work on yourself and tell yourself, I cannot be bored. Excuse me, but don't go. <laughs> you can you can't normalize me. Like every <laughs> that's like cobalize me. Don't don't write, don't know mind me. But basically the truth is you will need to like let yourself know that you cannot afford to be bored and then you just continue. As you do that more and more, naturally your mind becomes um, resistant of that feeling. You need to overcome that feeling before the exam. Because if you don't overcome that before the exam, uh, and nobody can do that for you, you have this by yourself. The problem that you come up is that in the exam hall, you could get bored. And if you get bored in the exam hall, ah, that's a go, a go, no, a go. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't understand how, how do you, okay, somebody is giving me a, a kind of. Oh, go, a senior. <laughs> all right somebody said well i conquer discussion by repeating what i have i'm hearing from the headphone after um uh, identifying the keywords though beautiful this is actually a way somebody tries to conquer um um you know the you know the the, the bottom you actually see find a strategy that suits you please um, you just need to find the side of you see, this thing is individualistic. If I tell you, um, uh, go to the toilet or something, it will not work for me. I go to the toilet, like, I, I have that time because I have a of time, a lot of time with my reading. I normally will finish reading in 40 minutes for five minutes, so I can easily say, all right, after my second paragraph, I go, but no, nobody will have that time, you know. So, um, you could, uh, you could find a way around it, probably you just, um. But all I have to do is do the easier, easier ones first, and do the tougher ones last, because you have more time to stretch, at least to just you know take your mind off the question and relax and think. But one one more thing is, anxiety will naturally bring boredom. So do not be anxious. Approach reading with 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 with, with, with lightness, with emotions. Approach reading with, with some level of smile, with with a form of you know desire that I'm going to get all of this and all that. And it work for you. I don't know whether anybody can also help us out with this. How do you do with boredom? You can share your experience on how you do with boredom. Probably it could help. It could help um, uh, Miss Azan here to get through. Somebody could just help, and uh, you could just be could be inspired by. It. Okay, Amarachi, please you can speak up, but please we need to see your face. And anybody can speak up, please. Um, let's let's share our our experience on dealing with boredom. Don't read the don't read the text. Oh, she's left too. Please. Um, um so the, the the floor is open. You could ask your question and you could tell us what you do to deal with um, um boredom reading tests.
uh, while we are doing that, I think I should invite um, uh, Mr. Bella to come in and um, speak to us. He's the chief moderator of this um, meeting. And um, I think we are delighted to have him. So um, for other questions, please, you can also come in to why Mr. Bella could uh, just take over. Isabella is busy. Okay. So please. Um, hello, good evening. Okay. okay, you're welcome, sir. Hello, hello, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Bella. How are you, sir? Good evening, sir. Um, sorry, I good just evening. had to pull over the, on the road. I'm on my way home. Um, okay. I didn't really join the class, to be honest. I just, I don't know. I, I just trust you guys are, are doing well. Um, yeah. Yes. I'll just say, yeah. just. Just spread the message. Um, so now we have moved from Facebook uh, to to YouTube. That's because it's difficult for me to remind people every time. So um, I no longer do reminders. So if people are interested, they'll remind themselves. And it's easier when you join on YouTube, um, you get a reminder, especially when you click on the, the bell. It reminds you of when the, the, the class starts. So all I want to do is I just want to uh, connect Mr. Steven and just uh, click on the uh, Facebook, um, YouTube live, and then everyone can, can have access. Because some people seem to be struggling with, the, with joining by YouTube. So, I mean, joining by Zoom. So if people cannot join by Zoom, at least they can see the class by YouTube. It's all about making it accessible to as many people as possible. So... Yeah, um, just, just share the message with your friends, uh, tweet about it, share it on social media. Uh, but we'll, we'll be moving to, to YouTube now. So if you join, if you follow us on YouTube, just click the bell sign and um, videos will be coming out. Also, the, we've done a first batch of our one to one, uh, a, a free one month one to one uh, with a personal tutor. So we've done the first one month. So me and the tutor are going through the videos currently. Um, what we're doing, trying to do is to make the videos available on YouTube as well, so people can probably watch it to learn. Because some people do not qualify. The offer is for nurses only. Uh, and the nurses uh, will need to have a few things in place. Have a valid passport, means you're ready to, trust, uh, to travel. Have your license to show that you're genuinely a nurse have your qualification as a nurse. So some people would not meet this criteria. Uh, so they can have access to YouTube and still see the classes that other people have had. So th those are just a few things we're, we're working on currently. So um, again, I pray that all this effort would not be in vain. Uh, we're building a community. Um, I pray that God will, before long, all of us will, will be out uh, with the past IELTS and will be probably going to, to the UK or wherever you want, you want to go and progress your career. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I'll just say for today. Um, very well done, Mr. Stephen. Well done. Yeah, thank you, Isabella. It's, it's really great what you're doing, and I think a lot of priority gaining, and we hope that it's blast all over. So, and, and also, for everyone that is here, we appreciate your presence, and we hope that um, you have given from the class. Um, based on there are no more questions. We we'll have to close the class now. But if you still have questions, you may just um, ask right now before we finally close the class. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I guess there are no more questions. So we'll Thank you, Mr. Steven. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Mr. Steven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.